Welcome to today's episode. This is Vanessa. China ready to support in Vietnam to wins over COVID-19 crisis. The state media report Chinese President Xi Jinping making a speech over video conference says only cooperation and support could solve the COVID-19 crisis. Only supporting each other and cooperating unitedly with each other is the proper way to win over the COVID-19 crisis. To solve the issues coming with economic globalization, all countries should form more inclusive global management, more effective mechanism, more active regional cooperation. Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank should promote each member to make joint development and be a new platform to promote a community with a shared future for mankind. During the annual meeting of Beijing backed Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, she said it will be a platform for every member country to make joint development. The backed Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank are approved more than 175 million for Pakistan, Vietnam, Georgia to support the country's economies and mitigate the impact of the coronavirus pandemic. The American fugitive accused of alleged investment fraud arrest in Indonesia. Local police says an American fugitive accused of investment fraud and want by the Interpol was arrested in Indonesia's tropical holiday island of Bali. Indonesian police says Marcus Bim entered the country in January with a fake passport and was involved in pornography production and sales prior to his arrest. Bali Police Chief Petrus Reinhardt Kulo says it is unclear at the moment whether Beam will be repatriated to the United States where he allegedly defrauded $500,000 of investment fund. So we have to work together between Indonesia and United States based on the law, based on the law and we have to respect Now he is in Indonesia, and then we have to think that how we transfer him based on the law to the United States of America. And he adds that there is no extradition treaty between the United States and Indonesia. Former Malaysian Prime Minister Najib at his first one Malaysia development Berhar case verdict. The first verdict of Malaysian former Prime Minister Najib Razak in a landmark case that tests the country's efforts to stamp out corruption and could have big political implications. It is therefore with deep sadness and regret that I must inform you that according to this new data, flight MH370 ended in the southern Indian Ocean. Najib Razak responding to question about money transfer over allegations that $4.5 billion was stolen in a globe-spanning scheme from one Malaysia development Bernhardt, one MDB, a fund he founded more than $1 billion made its way into his personal accounts. Uh, I was not, didn't have any knowledge whatsoever of monies coming in. I would not have condoned and allowed it if I knew. Mohamed Tapande Ali, former Malaysian Attorney General, says that based on the evidence from the witnesses and supporting documents submitted, he satisfies that no criminal offence. Berdasarkan keterangan saksi-saksi dan dokumen-dokumen sokongan. Based on the evidence from witnesses and supporting documents submitted, I am satisfied that no criminal offence has been committed in relation to the said 2.08 billion ringgit Malaysian donation. RM 2.08 billion tersebut. His party returned to power this year in an alliance led by Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yashin, prompting some to question how whether the return will affect some corruption cases against Najib. Four days after the announcement of $3.9 billion settlement with Goldman Sachs GS Point N in return for Malaysia dropping criminal charges against the investment bank over its role in helping 1MDB sell $6.5 billion in bonds. Najib will be first hear the verdict on seven charges he faces over receiving 42 million ringgit equal to $9.9 .9 million from former One Malaysia Development Bernhardt Unit, SRC International, in 2014. He has pleaded not guilty to criminal breach of trust, money laundering, and abuse of power. 
Najib testified that he was misled by Malaysian financier Joe Low and other 1MDB officials into believing the funds were donated by the Saudi royal family. Saudi Arabia Foreign Minister says in 2016 that the funds were genuine donation, but the government has not commented on the case since. His defense lawyer says if convicted, he will face hefty fines and jail terms of as much as 50 to 20 years on each charge. The verdict settlement seems as a boost to Muhyiddin Fledgling's four months old administration. The Prime Minister may call elections soon. Muhyiddin has a slim majority in parliament, and the opposition is gearing up for polls. Najib no longer leads his party but remains highly influential. Former Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak arrives at court of his first one Malaysia development Berhar case verdict. Former Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak arrives at the Kuala Lumpur court to hear a verdict in the first of several trials he faces over a multi-billion dollar graft scandal at One Malaysia Development per heart. Najib, who was voted out in a historic 2018 election, faces dozens of criminal charges over allegations that $4.5 billion was stolen from One Malaysia Development Bernhardt, or 1MDB. Prosecutors allege that more than $1 billion of the funds made its way into his personal account. Some of Najib's supporters gathered near the courthouse. Roads to the court were closed off for the security reasons. His lawyer says if convicted, the former premier could be punished with hefty fines and jail terms of up to 15 to 20 years on each charge. And he adds, it is unclear if he will be sentenced immediately if found guilty. Sentencing could be delayed or suspended due to the complex nature of the case. The British pilot Stephen Cameron, after contracting COVID-19 in Vietnam, recuperated in hospital in Scotland. A Scottish pilot, one sickest man in Asia, continued his recuperation from COVID-19 at the hospital in his homeland and he warns for people not taking the coronavirus pandemic seriously. Stephen Cameron says his recuperation is likely to be long and arduous and he urges people to take the virus seriously. I had multiple blood clots. I had renal failure. I had another couple of organs fail on me. My lungs were down to 10% capacity at one stage. I've been told that I was Asia's sickest patient. Okay. When I first woke up, I thought, will I, ever be able, will I be able to walk again? Was I paralysed? I didn't know if I was paralysed for life or anything, because I couldn't, I, I couldn't feel my feet. The vast majority of the country knew about Patient 91, which I, it was my moniker. When we went through the lobby, it must have been about 10 deep with people. Everybody had their phones out, even doctors, nurses and different wards that we went past. And then when I got into the back of the, um, the ambulance, um, when we were getting driven away, there was traffic cops out on the roads holding people back again. Maybe 15, 20 deep people out on the street and on, on the road. For somebody who doesn't really seek out um, notoriety or, or limelight, it was a bit surprising. and I wouldn't say overwhelming, but it, it, I just couldn't believe it. I mean, I'm a living example of what this virus can do and how it is serious. Um, you know, people might grumble about having to put on gloves or, you know, social distancing two metres apart and all this sort of stuff. But, you know, I contracted it and I was under for 10 weeks and in, in, in life support. It's no laughing matter. It's a, it's a very serious thing. And I think people can't be blasé about this until we have eradicated it. Stephen Cameroon moves to Vietnam, where he contracted the novel coronavirus and more than two months of intensive care in Ho Chi Minh City. All of the nation's best intensive care doctors played some part in caring for Cameroon. They tried to avoid recording Vietnam's first death from the coronavirus. In the nation of 95 million people, only around 500 cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed. Salam protest more government with cartoon team song. Hundreds of young protesters took to the streets of Bangkok, running around the city's democracy monument and singing a cartoon theme with modified lyrics as they call on to the government to stop wasting taxpayers' money. The young protesters are getting more creative with their demonstrations. We are no longer just seeing speakers contaminating the government or name-calling. The youngsters focus more on actions and by repeatedly shouting things like authoritarian, authoritarian, like today, they are running like the hamster in the cartoon Hantaro. Which suits me perfectly because I've been looking for a region joining in their activities and to give my dog some exercises too. Inspired by the cartoon Hamtaro, the protesters took inspiration from the main character, a hamster, by running in circles to imitate being in a hamster wheel and chanting, dissolve the parliament and authoritarians get out. 
You can hear in the mocking song that we talked about taxes. The tax that we've been paying does not resonate with what we are getting back from the government. For example, Taiwan has a similar cost of living as us, but we don't share the same benefits that the Taiwanese people get from their government. This is what we want the government to reconsider themselves. A protester clutching a plush figure of Hamtaro and who gave her name as Fa says the hamster-inspired protest was a way of getting away from traditional forms of demonstrating in the hope that the government will take notice. The adults may think because we are doing this, they cannot take us seriously. But this is the way for the new generations. We are doing this differently in the hope that something will change rather than sticking to the traditional way for protesting. In the Amtaro title music, in the lyrics that are supposed to be, the most delicious food is sunflower seed. The word sunflower seed rhymes with taxpayers' money. So, they replaced the word as a form of satire about the government who have been wasting taxpayers' money. The rally is the latest in a series of protests under the Free Youth Movement, which have three demands, the dissolution of parliament, an end to harassment of government critics, and amendments to the military written constitution. A thousand of stranded Filipinos cramped in baseball stadium in Manila wanted to return to their provinces. Thousands of Filipinos are cramped into a baseball stadium in Manila, breaking social distancing rule despite coronavirus risk after people wanting to return to their home provinces flooded a government transportation program. It's been so difficult. We're only eating eggs every day to survive. And that's about it. Officials reserved the stadium as a place to test people before transporting them back to their home provinces under a program to help people who has lost their jobs in the capital and return to their families. People must wear masks in public and observe one meter social distancing, while children and the elderly are urged to stay at home. A Filipino worker says he hopes to find a good life for the family, but the pandemic creates a hindrance. We overseas Filipino workers hope to find a good life for our families, but the pandemic had only created a hindrance to finding our successes. And Cabo says everybody at the stadium will undergo rapid testing for COVID-19 and must be cleared before allowed to board the buses, sea vessels and trains the government has prepared. Allowing businesses to reopen in a limited capacity, but schools remain shut and mass gatherings are banned. Vietnam reports its first local coronavirus infection in more than three months. A government statement says Vietnam reports first local coronavirus infection for more than three months after a man in the central city of Da Nang tested positive four times for the virus. The country's Prime Minister Nguyen Yung Shuang Phuc called on the public not to panic when he's speaking on the Vietnamese television. The fact that there are some new patients who have tested positive for the virus in a few areas is not a surprise to us. Therefore, we should keep calm. But among the public, especially in places that have many foreigners and tourists visiting such as Da Nang, the new cases seem to have come as a surprise, and this has negatively affected people's mindset. In this situation, we need to remain calm and take the matter seriously in order to find an effective way to stop it from spreading further into communities. Thanks to strict quarantine measures and an aggressive and widespread testing program, Vietnam keep its virus total to an impressively low 415 cases, no locally transmitted infections for 100 days. According to the health ministry, a 57-year-old man from Da Nang, a tourist hotspot, tested positive for the virus and 50 people who came into contact with the patient had been isolated. The government did not say how the man contacted the virus. Malaysia's Prime Minister Nazi Razak sentenced to over 10 years in a jail in first 1MDB graft trial. Malaysia's former leader, Najib Razak, finds guilty of corruption and sentenced to 12 years in jail in the first trial over a multi-billion dollar scandal at State Fund 1MDB that stretched to the Gulf states and Hollywood. Uh, I must be some sort of soothsayer if I can predict the result. But uh, as always, you hope for the best, but you prepare for the worst. No, because this is uh, definitely not the end of the world. Uh, because uh, there's a process of appeal. 
uh, and uh, we hope that we would be successful there. So um, the effort will continue and to my supporters, uh, I hope they will continue to believe in me, believe in our struggle and continue uh, to be uh, in uh, positive and in high spirit. In a case widely seen as a test of the Southeast Asian nation's resolve to stamp out corruption and which could have big political implications, High Court Judge Muhammad Nazlan Muhammad Ghazali sentenced Najib to 12 years and a fine of 210 million ringgit or equal to 49.40 million dollars on a charge of abuse of power. Najib, 67, also received 10 years in jail of three charges of criminal breach of trust and three charges of money laundering for illegally receiving nearly 10 million dollars from SRC International, a former unit of the state fund. High Court Judge Muhammad Nazlan Muhammad Ghazali grant a delay in carrying out a jail sentence and fine against Najib but also increase his bail amount by 1 million ringgit or equal to $235,300 that must be posted. Thailand celebrates Rama 10th birthday with a light show using hundreds of drones to illuminate the night sky. The 12-minute light show used 500 drones to depict various images of the Thailand king who turns 68. The drones also formed in the shape of a nurse and a doctor in gratitude to the frontline workers of novel coronavirus outbreak. The country has seen a number of pro-democracy demonstrations throughout the country. There were also some veiled public references at the protest to the powerful Thailand monarchy despite a law forbidding criticism of the king. Thailand's Prime Minister previously warned political activists not to criticize the monarchy, saying doing so could damage their job prospects even though the king had asked him not to make prosecutions under the law protecting the royal family. And that's the news for today. Have a nice weekend and see you soon.